Well, most you Americans think hey, Tom. Yeah, you better explain what incubus and succubus is because most people don't understand that. Well, the the, the male and female demons in uh, lore right. that would come to people at night and copulate with them. So. Right. Um, yeah, and, and, and there was also fables about the offspring of that copulation. And sometimes it includes, once again, giants. So there is a stream that is running deep in the psyche uh, of mankind and also within our history that tells us something happened once before, but now we're there again. And you and I have talked about the amazing parallels between what the Watchers did. We'll talk about this maybe um, later in this hour or in the next hour, the amazing parallels be between what we are doing now and what those ancient uh, fallen be uh, 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 beings did. But, Steve, most Americans would be absolutely amazed to learn that in preparation for this post-human revolution, the United States government itself, through the National Institutes of Health, which is the largest part of our government that makes grants and money available using U.S. tax dollars, in April 2006 granted Case Law School in Cleveland, Ohio, $773,000 of American taxpayers' money, guess what, to begin developing. I'm not making this up, and anybody that wants to Google this and read the press release from Case Law School for themselves can to begin developing the actual guidelines that will be used for the next for setting the policy, government policy, for the next step in human evolution, genetic enhancement. Maxwell Melhelm uh, is the professor of bioethics at Case Law School, or was then of medicine. He led the team of law professors, physicians, bioethicists over the two-year project that ended in 2009. And I'll quote, I'll quote from their press release, this small section, to, quote, develop standards for tests on human subjects in research that involves the use of genetic technologies to enhance normal individuals, uh, end quote. Now, that is a direct quote from their own press release. Um, Following that study in 2009, I can, I can uh, forward to people if they want it, Mel Helm began offering two university lectures. In fact, you can go to Arizona State University and listen to these as, as uh, downloads. One of them is called Directed Evolution, Public Policy and Human Enhancement. And the second is called Transhumanism and the Future of Democracy. Because keep in mind, Mel Helm is the uh, bioethicist from uh, Case Law School, who was given the million dollar, nearly million dollar grant from the U.S. National Institute of Health to begin establishing what the policies, uh, legal policies will be to extend um, uh, uh, the constitutional and Bill of Rights protections to human non-humans, enhanced humans. And immediately upon the conclusion of that study, they were supposed to publish, Steve, a report talking about how, how did they use human subjects, because that's what the money was given for. They actually used living human subjects for enhancement, genetic enhancement studies. Uh, they had, to this day, I have not seen any published report, but what I have saw is Melhelm out there now on the circuit going to the universities giving these lectures directed evolution, public policy, and human enhancement, and transhuman in the future, uh, transhumanism in the future, democracy, where he is addressing the need. I've heard these lectures for society to comprehend how emerging fields of science are in approaching years going to alter what it means to be a human and what that means to democracy, individual rights, free will, eugenics, uh, equality, um, I listened to part of one of his lectures today uh, on this very same thing, part of his transhumanism and the future of democracy, and he was saying that what scores of people are afraid of is directed germline genetic engineering, he says, where we are going to remove unwanted portions of DNA and add new segments of DNA to a sufficiently early form of human life so that the alterations that they create are going to be carried forward into preceding generations. 
Um, then he actually added cynically that, a quote, for people who are worried about this, the worst case scenario is that the entire elimination of the human species could occur, end quote. And he then he goes on to describe uh, how that can happen in two ways. Number one, Steve, by the destruction of the species by gene genetic Armageddon. Sounds very much like a book you wrote. And secondly, the new species of transhuman or posthumans uh, could become a superior hominid species that doesn't see the rest of us as valuable anymore and wipe out the normals. These are his words. And then he went on to proceed, astonishingly, to argue why directed evolution of the species to posthuman is necessary, forthcoming, and how the law is going to be written uh, to favor enhanced humans. Well, I believe that he's right. Unless there is a divine intervention, and God could do that, but if there's not, people had better realize that our own government is using U.S. taxpayers' dollars right now to actually set the policy for government guidelines that are going to be involved in, in, uh, in transhumanism. Other law schools, Stanford University, Oxford University, each of them now for the last few years are hosting at least one per year, some of them two per year, human enhancement and technology conferences where transhumanists, futurists, bioethicists, legal scholars, members of DARPA, the military, they're coming together and they're talking about what is the ethical, legal, and inevitable ramifications of post-humanity going to be. <coughs> One of the university professors, and I do apologize, Steve, I've had this cold all week and it keeps making me want to cough, um, is, of course, the director of the Future of Humanity Institute, a professor of philosophy at Oxford University, Nick Mostrom, you're familiar with him, aren't you? Yes. And he is a, a leading advocate of transhumanism, but a very specific center of interest, because he, like the ancient watchers before him, uh, watchers, the fallen angels that mingled human DNA with animals and their seed to produce Nephilim, he envisions remanufacturing humans with animals, plants, and other synthetic life forms through the use of modern sciences, including uh, germline engineering, recombinant DNA technology, transgenics. Um, but one of the horrific realities about this science is very splice-like, in that given that molecular biologists, they, they classify the functions of genes within their native species, but none of them know, in almost all cases, how the genes coding is going to react from one species to another. And therefore, they actually expect, that's where the splice movie is, is growing out of, the speculation, they expect the genetic structure of these modified animal humans is going to be changed in physical appearance, sensory modalities, disease propensity, prion contamination possibly, personality, behavior traits, maybe even gigantism, and more as a result of their modifications. And I took every one of those words out of their own documents, out of their own writings. Um, and then you can sum it up, you can sum it up, Tom, by saying, hey, they're not only bringing back uh, the forbidden uh, technological processes that caused the uh, anger of God to rise up and destroy the world that was, but also the thing is, is that they're in our face. You see, this is the thing that you and I have to do. We have to, by the grace of God, articulate to the pastors in the pulpits that do not understand the war that's against them, the necessity of, of, of being able to deal, to be able to teach their flocks. And I got news for you. It'd be a, a strange thing for them to teach their flocks instead of fleece their flocks, okay? And if they teach their flocks, they wouldn't have to fleece their flocks. That's just an, a little aside there. But the point is, is that this, this enhancement that, that's taking place, it is, again, it is the destruction of the seed of Adam if that were left to be. Because, again, the thing is, is that it's like uh, uh, the Frankenstein, sorry, uh, uh, Mary Shelley. The point is, is that there's so much behind it. Sue Bradley is doing an amazing job on her investigation of that, but even the electromagnetic attenuation of time and space and the hyperdimensional realms of a multiverse, multi, multiple dimensions that we don't even know of, the thing that's amazing to me is, is that 
they're talking about using a strand of DNA, whether it's uh, animal or human or a composite, to, to be able to store, if you will, the entire Library of Congress. So I, I think that what people have got to understand, and I want to share something. This is Nobody else has talked about this, but I will. The book of Ezekiel, in the 16th chapter, the women of Israel went after the Egyptians because they were great of flesh. Well, what do you see on television night and day? Male enhancement, okay? Enhancement. Mm -hmm. That's the word I'm going after, okay? I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be tacky. I'm not trying to, quote, get into the realms I shouldn't. But the point is, is that, that it, it is, if you will, it's the order of the day. And, you know, it's interesting because if, if you notice, obviously, when we get into the alien part, we'll, we'll go into the next hour with that. But it's, isn't it amazing that uh, of all the abductions, of all the sexual, if you will, processes and extractions, that basically somebody with the technology of the stars has to come to 